One of the most common punches in a fight is called a haymaker punch, that big old swinging punch. This video is gonna teach you how to deal with that, whether you're big or small. What is a haymaker punch? Just think of it like a circular strike. If I'm going to hit Chris, a lot of people throw the haymaker because they think it's gonna generate more power. So his hands are down, they're just kind of swinging like the old anvil throw. They're throwing and they're trying to hit. This is where actually typically a lot of people break their hands to when they actually punch a human skull because their hands are in a weird position. So this isn't like a good boxing hook punch or anything like that. This is just that wild swinging punch that we tend to see. Number one thing that we want to be looking at here is understanding our range. If I have excellent timing and I see the attack coming, that's going to determine what I do. So what do I mean by that? He throws that haymaker at me and I'm able to step in and do something. That's the best possible timing. I'm waiting patiently. He goes to cock something back. I see him cock it back and immediately I can move in and take away a lot of his power. He's going to be strongest at the end of that strike. Notice how the distance changed. If I'm in closer, this makes things better. The first thing that we're going to be looking at here, though, is your typical karate block, or let's just call it hard energy versus hard energy. He's throwing the attack at me. I'm blocking it with hard energy. So he goes to a throw. Let's talk about our block here first. My rear hip has to be facing the center of where my heart is. So don't think that you can block this with one hand and chop unless you're way bigger than they are, okay? So let's always train, even though I'm bigger than Chris, like I'm the smallest person. I turn my hip, I'm pivoting my foot, my elbow's in, I'm past 90 degrees in this elbow here. Because if this, if you come to this side, if this elbow is bent in like this, this is a weak block, a weak structural position. I need to have that greater than 90 degrees. I'm trying to block with my forearm, technically my ulna muscle. I don't want to be blocking with this part. That's going to hurt quite a bit. His radius bone here, if I strike it, cause a little bit of pain, but it ain't going to stop it. Okay. My other hand, if they're way bigger, can just go to the arm itself. Okay. So again, Think like double forearm chop. When I do this in my kids program, they can actually stop like a grown man's punch with this. It's what we do afterwards that now we're gonna talk self-defense. With some training, this right hand eventually can come up to here. Don't think like judo chop, awesome power strike, he falls down, <laughs> not really realistic. So it's more so I'm just putting something on him. From this point here, I'm worried about his left hand. Usually what you end up seeing is people swing and they go swing and they swing again, okay? So as he throws, I'm here, I'm worried about that other hand. This is where my boxing comes into play. My hand can cover my head, cover my face, right? But really as I'm throwing this, I'm trying to hit him before the hand hits me. So when this is up here, if I'm really close, like I'm just at 90 degrees here, when I go to turn, now I'm looking at my elbow, but we're really close on this. So if you're choosing to throw that counter, I recommend always trying to punch to the spine. Send him away so that that fist cannot do anything. So if he throws here and I just clip him like this, that punch can still come and hit me and it's whoever's gonna hit it faster and have more power is gonna win that fight. So I don't even necessarily have to like hit him hard. I really just need to move him away. So the reaction here is I'm getting my blog and I'm just turning and just trying to send him away. Remember, we're just trying to build a response. The first one that we're building here is hard versus hard. If, switch feet please, he throws from that lead hand punch and I'm in what's called a partner C stance. So his right leg is forward and my left leg is forward. If he goes to throw that, throw hard please, right here, my balance can be taken away from me a little bit. Right? So depend on how they throw is going to really determine what I do. That's why it's so important to switch feet that while we're doing this, we're building a good block. So he's here. Boom. Timing's good. I step in, train that a whole bunch. He again goes, bang, boom. Now I fire my strike. Maybe I'm in closer. Bang, boom. I hit that elbow again here. Maybe I step and just send him away right away. That last one's a little bit more advanced. I'm only gonna talk about it real quick. Watch my feet. I'm stepping in, my foot steps through him. 
So a little Wing Chun footwork for you there. He's here and I'm through. I'm not worried about striking him at that point. I'm just like a bulldozer coming through it. Okay, we're dealing with that haymaker again, but this time they're way bigger. This is actually what I teach in my kids program is teaching them to be able to duck underneath it. Okay, so now we're saying hard energy versus soft energy. So he goes to throw that strike at me, I duck. Number one thing, right? Like worst case scenario, I stand there and I take it. Second case scenario, he throws it and at least my hands are up and I get a little defense, right? So let's start making things a little bit better. He throws again and now I just duck. The nice thing about the haymaker right now with his left foot back, sorry, left foot forward, my left foot forward is it's coming from his back or his rear hand. This should, in theory, if you look at me, you can see that coming more than if my right leg's forward and I throw here. So it's just a distancing because the hip and the shoulder are gonna open up. In theory, this should allow me to move. So as he goes to throw that, I'm now gonna step, cutting an angle as I'm ducking. I find my stance, look at my stance, I've angled off. He's at zero degrees, I'm at 90 degrees, I don't even have to punch him, I can simply push him before he squares up to me. If you understand timing in the boxing world though, it's not very likely. Slow-mo we do this. He throws the strike. I duck and I step. From here, as I take my right step back, he can move his right leg back. And now we're back to even, right? So if he's drunk, maybe he'll be a little slower, but that's never gonna be a guarantee. So in order for you to get good at this and create a counter, he fires at me, maybe I hit one low first. This isn't gonna finish the strike, but at least it's gonna give me one point, him zero, I'm not getting hit. As I go to step back here, let's say that that injured him a little bit by hitting him into the ribs, just a little, right? When I go and step, now I might fire before that hand comes out. But now let's go back to what we were talking about. I'm smaller, he's bigger. Have I trained enough with my punches that I trust that my fist is going to do that job? Self-defense world, I'm responding. He throws a punch at me. Holy shit, my training kicked in. I'm here. Cool. What other training do you have, right? Watch my range on that last one. He threw that. I'm a little far away. Maybe I throw the old dick kick. Maybe I try and push him away. There's a lot of different things that can happen right? Maybe I'm used to boxing. I'm in tight and I can definitely hit at that range, right? Maybe I just had a reaction. I'm like, ah, and I just push him with my footwork. There's so many things here. What we're trying to think about though, soft energy versus hard energy. I'm not trying to fight him per se. I'm trying not to get hit. Maybe I'm with my family. He throws and I'm like, ah, buddy, I don't want to do this. I told you I don't want to do this. What? Now I hit him because it's time for me to do something. Okay, hard energy versus hard energy again, but this time I'm not blocking a thing, okay? I'm just putting my wing covers up. So what's a wing cover? I take my hand, I protect the back of my head, I tuck everything in, protecting my jaw, protecting my ear, hopefully protecting my temple, and I suck all that in. I do that with both hands. Your goal here is to be able to touch your elbows together. For some of you guys, your elbows may not touch together, right? Just make sure that you're defending enough that a fist can't fit in the middle, right? Because they might fake it and throw straight, right? Your goal here, if he throws his punch, is gonna come up, freeze, is gonna be his beautiful face. So if we come to this side, what are we looking at? What are we going to hit? Okay, I'm just gonna use one elbow so you can see my pretty face, right? So I'm here, I'm driving forward. I had one Muay Thai instructor say, put your elbow into his teeth, right? So if his mouth is open, right? Just imagine that driving into there, that's gonna open his mandible, it might pinch his mandibular process. That right there may cause a knockout, not very likely, but it's gonna hurt a whole bunch, okay? Maybe I'm a little shorter and the elbow goes and hits to the collarbone, maybe to the neck, maybe he's defending himself, maybe it's hitting to the nose. Ideally, we're not hitting that forehead, but really what am I trying to do? I'm trying not to get hit. This one requires excellent timing because if he throws a punch and I just take it, at least I blocked, good enough, right? Kind of like a holy shit response, like, ah, 
And that came up. Cool, it might work. Let's use some forward look at my feet real quick here. He's throwing something circular. Don't throw, sir. I'm stepping in. So when I step in as a martial artist, front foot, then back foot. Make sure you guys remember that. We call it a step and glide in our academy. I'm bringing my hands up from my defensive position, right? He goes to throw his strike. And boom, I'm just coming forward. Please be careful when you guys are training at home with this. If you notice, I want Chris to be able to work tomorrow. I'm driving my triangle right here beside him. In real life scenario, triangle goes right at that mouth, right at a center line, no matter if his chin is down or not. I'm just going full force into there. Okay, one more time he fires. Right, what do I do at that point? Maybe I hit, maybe I hit, maybe I don't, right? I'm really hoping that what I call double wing cover, double elbow eight is going to get that job done. Okay, similar to the last video, right? Now it's again that same idea of what's faster, something circular or something straight. If I'm at point A and he's, his face is at point B, he takes the circle route. It's therefore longer than my straight line. Simple math and geometry. So what am I doing? I'm stepping in. Okay, let's say perfect timing. I see him go to cock his punch back. He throws, I throw, I hit him before he hits me. That works great if I, one, have great timing. Two, if my arms are longer than his, that's going to give me a better chance of hitting him before he hits me. But what do they say? You're usually 0.5 of a second behind when you're reacting to something. Right, so now we're kind of in this dangerous world. I'm still moving in, he might be moving in, lots going on. So how do we guarantee that we can hit without taking too much damage? So slow-mo, he throws the punch, I'm going to strike. And if you notice here, it kind of bounced off my shoulder. That's what I'm looking for. My shoulder protected my jawline, okay? So normally when I throw a jab, right, I can throw it straight. If I throw it like a boxer, become the turtle, roll it over and protect your jaw. So your shoulder will protect that. So when I'm in close here, I'm trying to protect. This might come up and deflect off, but ideally my shoulder is taking the damage. In the best case scenario, I'm hitting him before that is happening. Notice how I switched to a palm strike here because if you haven't trained martial arts a lot, if you go to hit with your knuckles, you might break your hand. You got to work the next day, right? So you can switch the palm strike. What do we lose by switching to a palm strike? If you take a look from the side, my fist can hit him now, whether it's like this or this, my palm cannot. So your fist will give you range. If you have really short arms, you can always go to fingers, okay? You're probably going to break a finger though, to be honest. It might be worth it to you though, if you don't want to take that punch. Again, I'll leave the choice up to you. So it all comes down to timing. What is a good rule of thumb though here is as he goes to throw that strike, is I'm here, I'm jamming that. Now what do I do? I hit. One hits, second one hits. Did you guys notice what Chris did there as a new K, whether he knew it or not? He tried to throw it higher because he knew what I was going to do. So that actually punch deflected off the top of me. If that punch was coming again and it came to here, I wouldn't have to do anything, right? If somebody's throwing that punch, they should be aiming right at that jawline if they know what they're doing. If they don't know what they're doing, they're just trying to hit a big circle. So be it. That's what just happened there. Definitely wouldn't have taken damage there. So again, he throws, boom, right? I get my coverage. Boom, and I hit just a little faster for you. I'm in, bang, bang, and I go to hit. Look what happened on that one. As that punch came forward, this came here. And again, because he didn't want to take my palm to his face, he actually moved his head a little to the side. My hand hit, deflected off, and became more of like a clinch. From this point here, it's very easy for me to strike him. Close my eyes. You can always punch your hand. So there's a lot of different things that will take place with your uke, whether Chris knows it or not. It doesn't matter. That's kind of the realism of some training that you get. So on that one, timing is imperative, making sure that you can get to him before he gets to you, right? If you're way off on the timing and he throws it, that might just save you there. But look at the range, it would have never hit me. If he steps in to throw it, boom, there's my shoulder. 
ooh, that one's close to temple. He might hurt me a little bit there, right? Watch what happens when I turn that shoulder over. Now I'm a little bit more safe. So these are all things you don't have to train really fast or hard. You just got to be able to practice it. Stay safe.